Hi everyone and good morning. It's Saturday today obviously and um, as you can see I'm a bit of a child. I'm obsessed with these filters. Um, I didn't have a lot to say today. Um, I just thought I'd update you on um, my week because on Monday I talked a little bit about um, going slow and taking this week easier. Um, if you've been following me on While the Kettle Boils for a while you'll know that I was... Um, waking up every morning and doing these videos and saying how tired I was feeling um, and I'm really pleased to report that I'm feeling so much better this week and um, I think this is possibly the latest I've ever done this while the kettle boils because it's now currently 20 past 7 and I actually slept until 7 o'clock which is amazing um, I've been taking melatonin the whole week which I know that you can't buy in this country um, you can buy it in America, you can buy it in Europe um, I'm not going to get into trouble for talking about it on this episode, but um, when I go to America for conferences and things like that, um, it's always um, you know pretty exhausting because you're jet lagged and you've got to get up and go to the conference. Um, so what I usually do is I buy some melatonin and I just have that when I'm there to help me sleep. So I had a little bit still left over from the last time I was in America and I was just thinking, oh, it would be so nice just to know... Um, I was getting a really deep sleep, so what I've been doing this week is I've been taking it um, just to help with sleep, and then I was also a little bit worried about taking it because I was thinking, oh, I, you know, I don't want to, the only time I sleep well is when I take this. So last night I um, decided not to take it, I decided just to have like a, a normal sleep <laughs> in inverted commas, um, and I was fine and I slept really, really well. I slept for 10 hours last night, sorry, sorry to brag if you didn't have a good night's sleep last night. Um, but anyway, this week has been my week of going slow. And um, the whole purpose of it was just really to slow things down and um, take a little bit more time for me so that I could, um, you know, just sort of get my energy back because at the end of last week, I was, yeah, I wasn't in a good place and I was um, really sort of wondering if this was how I was going to feel for the rest of my life and how I was going to survive, <laughs> quite literally. And um, so, yeah, something needed to happen. And so what happened this week was I um, stripped back my training. So I just did um, basically yoga practice at home or I'd go for a little run, but like 30 minutes, not pushing myself particularly hard, just like jogging along. Um, very fortunately, um, my diary calendar with clients wasn't that busy this week so I just had a bit more time and it was really no it was really interesting to notice how much more creative I became because I had that space so usually you know when I've got lots of appointments it's like get the things that need to do done and then you're just you know appointment 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 eat make some food you know, do things at home, sleep. And um, because I kind of had a little bit more flexibility this week, a little bit more space to go, what would I like to get done in this time? You know, what 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 is next? What is the next step? What's coming? Um, I had that creative space just to sort of come up with some new ideas, which is very exciting. But the problem is sometimes um, I always think of myself as a very structured person. So I always think that... Um, I'm very like, I love a spreadsheet, I love a database, I love data, I love science, um, I'm very much like organized, data driven person and I don't always think of myself as a creative person but actually this week what I've sort of realized is that maybe I am creative, I'm just so busy being busy that I lose a little bit of my creativity because the problem I guess when you're a business owner if you're too creative is um, you just jump from one thing to the next before fully seeing things through which is what clients sometimes do with their diets as well. <laughs> they jump from one diet to the next before fully um, problem solving. So um, yeah, that was just a really interesting observation this week. I went back to the gym yesterday and I did my first workout for the week. And again, I did some stuff that I normally do, but um, I kept it pretty chilled. I kept my workout to 45 minutes. Um, half of that time was doing some strenuous stuff, yes, and the other half of the time was more just like, body weights, activation, supplementary work, that kind of thing. So all in all, that was my week of slow. I was also tracking my macros. 
Good morning, Sarah. And what does Sarah say? The both of us well rested then. Yay. Looking forward to hearing about your new ideas. Bing. <laughs> Love it, Sarah. So um, Sarah was on at the beginning of the week and she um, ran her very first marathon um, on Sunday. So she's also needed a slow week this week. I believe she's at a spa this weekend. So I hope the spa was amazing, Sarah, and you got the rest that you needed. Um, so just where I dropped off, I was just saying that the other thing I was doing was also tracking macros. Now, macro tracking is, um, you know, something I use with my clients um, all the time, um, but it's not something that I expect people to do for the rest of their life. So just because I teach my clients macro tracking doesn't mean that I track my macros all the time. I'm, I don't really need to anymore. But um, one of the things that I was concerned about was that I know a lot of people have problems with overeating and they eat too much or they eat too many carbohydrates. Um, I can be a little bit diff different, so I don't really um, overeat, um, but I can sometimes undereat or sometimes not necessarily always get the right balance of foods. So what that can often look like for me is undereating on carbohydrates, which I know for some people is a bit crazy. But um, I love fatty foods, so I love avocado and I love olive oil and I love oily fish and salmon and scrambled eggs with like butter dribbled all over it. Um, you know, those are my pleasure foods and I love dark chocolate too, which is, well, I love chocolate, but we will try to make it dark because it's easier to control yourself when it's dark. And, but yeah, so those are my pleasure foods. And um, so for me, it's like, it's very easy for me to eat those types of foods and, you know, get adequate calories, maintain my body weight with those types of foods. But with carbohydrates, from in my, and this is my mind, this is like my belief system, my model of the world, is that they just involve so much effort because you have to cook them. Um, so we don't have a toaster in the house, um, and that's by design, because we don't want to be eating lots and lots of bread. That's like a danger zone. I think if we had a toaster in the house, Ben would eat... Um, uh, he would eat like bread and honey like every single day, which wouldn't be great for him. Um, but anyway, so if I have a carbohydrate, it has to be rice or um, potato or sweet potato or what else? What are the, yeah, those are the those are the favorite ones I guess? Rice, um, potato, sweet potato. So then you've got to cook those. So sometimes if you're just trying to make a meal quickly. You're like, oh yeah, I'll just leave those out and I'll just add more fat. So um, I kind of think eating a diet which is higher in fat is a little bit more convenient for me personally. Um, so that's why I was tracking my macros this week is because I just wanted to see that, especially if I do like a leg day or something, which is very demanding, then if I don't eat enough carbohydrates, my recovery is poor. And then that can also be something which makes me feel tired. So I was tracking my macros this week just to make sure I was eating enough. And I think what I told you about the carbohydrates was probably true um, because I cooked up some white rice and then I was sort of measuring it out and putting it on my plate and I was like, hmm, this is a lot of white rice. So I think I was definitely not eating enough. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my week of slow. I do now have a busier week next week and I've got... I'm trying to open this thing while I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, I don't know if anybody else uses this. This is the Rude Health coconut milk, but I put it in my coffee in the morning and I love it. Um, so anyway, um, what was I saying? So yeah, I've got a busier week next week and then I've got a few pretty busy weekends. I'm doing a um, life coaching and business coaching course next weekend. And then the weekend after that, I'm going to London. I'm doing three days with Dr. Joe Dispenza from um, Breaking the Habit of Being You and You Are the Placebo, if any of you read those books. So that's going to be very, very busy because when you're in courses on the weekend, you don't get any rest. So those are the challenges that are facing me ahead. Um, the final thing I wanted to say today was actually something about success. But I might save that for Monday because success and motivation stuff is, um, that's like Monday stuff, isn't it? So, um, good morning, everyone. <laughs> I hope you have an amazing weekend. Um, I hope you're feeling good going into the weekend, just like I am. And um, thank you for, so much for all your comments and support this week. And um, yeah, hit me up with some ideas for While the Kettle Boils next week. See you soon.